What's up guys, welcome back to another video. The Dragon Spiral Descent event has started around the world. Let's go through all the event details and then some tips and tricks for the event, timestamps below as always. Now I already made a video on the details for the event today, so I'm just gonna play that two minute video right now. Feel free to skip it if you already know the details. So the Dragon Spiral Descent event is gonna be December 7th, 10 a.m. local time to December 12th, 8 p.m. all local time. First off, we're gonna have the new Pokemon Drudigan appearing in Pokemon Go. I'll talk about how to encounter in a second, but this Pokemon will be making its debut and it will have a shiny release upon debut so you can get shiny drud again in pokemon go during this event and after we'll talk about how to get it in a second guys i just want to add something in here it seems like niantic might have forgotten to turn on shiny drud again in pokemon go there are no reports on twitter or on reddit of anyone getting a shiny drud again yet so it's either a really really high shiny odds or niantic forgot to turn it off so just be wary of that i'm gonna leave in the pin comments below if this does get fixed and if someone ends up finding a shiny drud again but for now it seems like no one's gotten a shiny drud again yet so niantic might have not turned on the switch yet. Big oops. Wild spawns for the event. The common ones are going to be Vulpix, Seal, Dratini, Mareep, Sneasel, Trappins, Blitzel, and Darumaka. And then rare wild spawns will be Dragonair, Vibrava, and Dino. All of them can be shiny except for the Dragonair and the Vibrava. As far as shiny odds, by the way, go in the wild. Sneasel is going to be the only perma boosted shiny Pokemon. There's going to be a 1 in 64 chance of getting a shiny Sneasel in the wild. All the other Pokemon here on screen with a little shiny icon, all these are probably going to have a 1 in 400 or full odds chance. As far as raids go during the event, one star raids are going to have Tynamo, Litwick, Cubchoo, Golet, and Dino. Only Cubchoo and Dino can be shiny from that bunch. Three-star raids are going to have Electabuzz, Magmar, Lapras, Dragonite, and Drudigan. All of them can be shiny except for the Dragonite. Five-stars, of course, still have Reshiram and Zekrom. Both can be shiny. And the Mega Raids still have Mega Steelix, which can be shiny. It's going to be a special event, one-time purchase bundle in the shop for 175 Poke Coins featuring three remote passes. Usually it costs 250 Poke Coins for three remote passes, but during this event, we're going to be getting a discount. But note, this is only a one-time purchase, so you can only buy this once. The one thing I didn't mention in that video is the research. So let's go through the official collection challenge and field research that we're getting during the event. First of all, the collection challenge will require you to catch a Trap Inch, catch a Mareep, Seal, Vulpix, Dratini, Darumaka, Blitzel, Sneasel, Vibrava, and a Dragonair, and that will reward you 1,000 XP, 3,000 stars, and a Drudigan encounter. Now, as far as field research tasks go for the event, we have make three nice curveball throws in a row for a Dratini, which can be shiny, win a raid in under 60 seconds for a Sneasel, which can be shiny, that one is perma boosted, 1 in 64, win a raid for a Dino, which can be shiny, and win three raids for a Drudigan encounter. So it looks like they're really trying to lock Drudigan behind paywall since you can only get it through three star raids or a task that is win three raids. Kind of unfortunate. There are a lot of paywalls in these field researches. With all the event details out of the way, let's get into some tips and tricks for the event, starting with what are the most meta spawns and spawns you should be focusing on during this event. First off, we have Vulpix spawning in the wild. Now, Alolan Vulpix into Alolan Ninetales. Alolan Ninetales is actually a very good Great League and Ultra League Pokemon in the PvP meta. Regular Ninetales and regular Shadow Ninetales can even be used in some special meta cups like the current Remix Great League Cup. So getting yourself a lot of Vulpix candy can be very useful during this event. I'm going to talk about a trick in this video on how to get a lot of Exile candy for some of these Pokemon. We also have Seal spawning in the wild, Seal evolving into Dugong. Dugong is an amazing Great League Pokemon. Dugong is going to be ranked 27 in the Great League and even better in special event cups. However, you do need two Legacy moves on this Pokemon. You need Legacy Ice Shard and Legacy Ice Moon, which costs you an Elite Fast and Elite Charge Jam if you want to run this Pokemon. So it is expensive. Get yourself a good IV Dugong for the Great League. We also have Dratini spawning in the wild and also Dragonair as well. Now both Dratini and Dragonair evolve all the way up into to Dragonite. Now, Dragonite is going to be a good Dragon type raid attacker, and especially in its shadow form, if you do have the shadow form. You can get Shadow Dratini, by the way, from the Roar. How does that sound grunt? There's a 100% chance of getting it there. But then also, Dragonite is good in PvP, specifically in the Master League. We're ranked 26 in the regular Master League and ranked 27 in the Master League Classic, and even better in some of the Premier Cups. But getting yourself a high IV Dragonite is very good, and if you really, really want, you can even run this Pokemon in the Great and the Ultra League. However, it is pretty frail in those leagues. Those have Mareep spawning the wild Mareep all the way up into Ampharos. Ampharos does have a current Mega. You don't have a lot of candies or XL candies for Mega Ampharos. Go after and then also get yourself a good IV one for the Mega if you don't have that. Yet. Also, Sneasel spawning in the wild. Sneasel evolving into Weavile. Weavile is a decent dark and ice type raid attacker. However, its shadow form is where it really shines. You have some shadow Weavile's you've been meaning to power up. Make sure you catch a bunch of Sneasels to get those candies and XL candies so you can power up your shadow Weavile's. It's one of the best dark and ice type raid attackers in the game in its shadow form. You also have Trapinch spawning in the wild. Trapinch evolving into Flygon. Flygon is a decent Great League Pokemon. You can run it in special event cups. It's not meta, but it's still something to maybe have in your arsenal if you can pick one up during this event. We also have Darumaka spawning in the wild. Now, Darumaka into Darmanitan. Darmanitan is a budget fire type attacker. Not the most amazing, but you can use as a fire type ray attacker. However, you want to get the Darumakas because you want to get those candies to invest into the Galarian form of Darumaka and Darmanitan. Galarian Darmanitan is one of the best ice type ray attackers right now, and if it ever gets its Zen form, it's going to be number one by a long shot. So make sure you go ahead and get 
those candies for Darumaka during this event. Again, I'm going to talk about how to get a lot of extra candies for these Pokemon in a second. And then we have Dino spawning in the wild, but that's going to be a very rare spawn. Same with the Dragonair and Vibrava. Dino evolving into Zuelis. Zuelis is actually the second stage evolution. That Pokemon is actually a decent Great League Pokemon and specifically for special Great League Cups. So get yourself a Great League Zuelis if you do not have one yet. Now, as I mentioned, get a lot of candy for these Pokemon and use them where I told you. However, if you're above level 40, you're going to be asking how to get a lot of XL candies because those are the candies that allow you to take the Pokemon above level 40. Currently, it's the season of heritage and the bonus during this event we're getting is guaranteed candy XL when trading Pokemon. So any of the Pokemon that I mentioned that are going to be good as raid attackers, good in the Master League or good in the XL form in the Ultra League, make sure you're going ahead and trading those Pokemon when you catch them during this event to get XL candies. You can do up to 100 trades a day. So making sure during every single day during the season of heritage, you're trading at least 100 Pokemon to get 100 XL candies for free is definitely essential to do. So make sure you save those Pokemon like Sneasels, Dratinis, Darumakas and any Pokemon you want XL candy for during this event. Before I talk about the best raids during this event, let's take a look at Drudigan, the new Pokemon. Is it going to be any good in Pokemon Go? Check it out right now. Drudigan is a pure Dragon type Pokemon, has a base stamina of 184, attack of 213, and defense of 170, with a max EP of 3088 at level 50. For fast moves, it can learn Dragon Tail and Bite, and for charge moves, it can learn Dragon Tail, Night Slash, and Hyper Beam. As far as raids go, Drudigan will not be good. There are so many better Dragon type raid attackers like Dragonite, Salamance, and pretty much any Dragon type legendary. As far as PvP goes, Drudigan won't be very good as well. It's going to be ranked 280 in the Great League, 114 in the Great League Remix, 187 in the Ultra League, and 155 in the Ultra League Remix, 213 in the Master League, 220 in the Master League Classic. The problem that Drudigan has is not only does it get locked up by a lot of fairy type Pokemon with its dragon and dark moveset, but Drudigan is also just a very attack weighted Pokemon and doesn't have the bulk to survive moves in PvP. Drudigan might see some play in some future event cups, so make sure you still grab yourself one for the Great in the Ultra League. However, all in all, not an amazing Pokemon to get. One final thing to note too, if you are getting Drudigans from raids, the high CP can be as 1561 and the lowest it can be as 1487. So it might be a little tough to get yourself a Drudigan for the Great League if you're trying to get it from raids, since its CP can be over 1500 upon catching. So you might have to trade that one. So yeah, Drudigan looks like it's only going to be good for some, you know, special Great League and Ultra League Cups where most of the meta is banned since it does struggle against a lot of the meta and doesn't look like it's going to be a good raid attacker. So honestly, a Pokemon you can grab for the shiny, but really not the most meta Pokemon at the moment. With that out of the way, let's take a look at the raids and what are the best raids during the event? Which ones are worth going after? First of all, as far as the one star raids go, honestly, there's nothing really here I would say to go after. Dino is spawning in the wild, so unless you really want to get those dinos or shiny dinos, you can raid for it. The only other one I would look for is maybe Litwick because Chandelure is a good ghost and fire type raid attacker. However, there's been plenty of events where all these Pokemon have been spawning in the wild, so none of them are really worth going after. As far as the three star raids go, avoid Electabuzz and Magmar. They do have spotlight hours on the next upcoming two Tuesdays. Lapras is a decent Pokemon to go after. That's going to be a perma boosted shiny Pokemon. So 1 in 64 odds of getting the shiny. And Lapras is a good Great League and Ultra League Pokemon to run. However, Lapras is a boosted wild spawn this season near watery areas. So maybe it's better off to just go there instead of wasting a raid pass. Also have Dragonite in the raids. Dragonite, every time you catch it, is going to get your two guaranteed Dratini XL candies. So if you are trying to get a level 50 Dragonite, then not only is catching the Dratinis and Dragonairs in the wild effective, but also raiding Dragonite might be good. Then finally, we have the Drudigan. Like mentioned, Drudigan might not be a really worthy Pokemon to raid since it's not very very meta, but if you are going for that shiny and you really want the shiny, then raiding might be the only way. Of course, the five star raids, Reshiram and Zekrom, people might be asking which one is the best. My quick analysis is that Reshiram is good as a fire and dragon type raid attacker. However, Zekrom is good as an electric dragon and then also a pretty good master league Pokemon. So I find Zekrom has more uses, but in the end, I would raid both. Make sure you get both Zekrom and Reshiram. And then Mega Steelix, I wouldn't go ahead and raid this Pokemon. I would wait until there's a field research task to come out in which we can get free mega energy for this Pokemon. Since Mega Steelix is not a very useful mega, other than for the ground and steel mega boost. I quickly want to cover some tips and tricks for these field research tasks. First of all, the make three nice curveball throws in a row task. Some people struggle to make these throws in a row. So what I'm going to do is going to link below a video on how to do the throws in a row task very easy. It's a 60 second video explaining a trick that you can use to do this task very easy. As far as the win a raid, win a raid in under 60 seconds and win three raids task goes, the best way to approach this as a free to play player or anyone who's maximizing efficiency is to get more than one of these tasks. So when you do complete one raid, it will be counting towards three three different tasks at once. So for example, you can collect three win three raids tasks. And then if you win three raids, you will get three extra dreading encounters instead of just having the one task at a time. Let's talk about mega evolution. If you don't know if you mega evolve Pokemon, any Pokemon you catch is the same type as that mega, you will get a bonus candy. What mega should we be mega evolving during this event? Honestly, the spawns are kind of everywhere. The only two megas I would maybe mega evolve would be a dragon mega, which you can evolve mega Charizard X, mega Altaria, or mega Ampharos. That will be giving you extra candy for Dratini, Dragonair, Vibrava, and Dino. The other mega you might might want to mega evolve would be a mega bomb snow which is 
an ice type mega, which would give you extra candy for seal and sneasel. You can even evolve a fire type mega if you want for Vulpix and Darumaka, but in the end, it's gonna be your choice. I think the dragon mega is the go-to if you really wanna grind out candy for some of these Pokemon. Let's talk about some metal tips. If you don't know, you need 35 platinum metals to go from level 48 to 49 in Pokemon Go. You wanna get on these metals right now because trust me, once you're level 48, it's gonna take a long time to get them all. There's only two metals I think are the main priority for this event. First of all, the dragon metal is a struggle for a lot of people. It requires you to catch 2,500 dragon type Pokemon. With a couple dragon type Pokemon spawning the Wild Journeys event, this is gonna be a great time to finish this metal, specifically hunting those Dratinis. Kind of interesting though that the Dragon Spiral event is not spawning as many dragon type Pokemon. Although the actual tower in the main series games didn't spawn a lot of dragon type Pokemon, still interesting that they didn't throw in some Pokemon. The only other metal I would recommend doing during this event, of course you can do any of the type metals here, is the Rising Star Metal it requires you to defeat 150 species of Pokemon in raids. I want you guys to take a look at the raid bosses, find out which ones you've never raided for and make sure you do those raid bosses at least once. I know Drudigan will be a new one for all of you, so that's definitely one to go after. Take a look at the raids, find out what species of Pokemon you've never raided before and raid so you can complete your Rising Star Metal. That's pretty much it for the tips for this event, guys. I'd love for you guys to comment below any tips I missed because you know I am not perfect and I wish you guys all good luck with the Dragon Spiral event in Pokemon Go. It's gonna be an interesting event. It really sucks that they're really trying to lock down Drudigan Shiny behind a lot of paywalls. So honestly, myself, I'm not gonna be trying to hunt that new shiny Drudigan. I don't think it's gonna be worth it. But let me know if you're gonna be doing it below, guys. We're gonna see you on the next one. Follow for tips, everyone. Peace.